So really, here I'm not. This video is not to apologize. This we have done nothing wrong as the majority of Muslims to so apologize for anything. This video is an education for Muslims and non-Muslims alike, so that they can have a reference point as to what the normative Islamic position is in relation to these kinds of things. Okay, so the first thing I want to mention as it relates to the Islamic discourse, yeah, the the kind of ayat or the verses that were in the Quran in the beginning uh, addressing disbelievers well verses like the 14th verse of surah al-jathiyah well Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says qul lil ladina amnu yaghfiru lil ladina la yarjuna ayyam Allah well Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear that tell the people who believe to to forgive those who do not believe in the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is in the 14th chapter of the 45th uh, 14th verse of the 45th chapter of the Quran so this is one example, right? Now this verse became mansukha, became abrogated with the verses of war when it was an imminent threat against the Muslims. So, <laughs> uh, peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, we are here today just to get another liar busted as usual. Uh, so this is a verse, it is abrogated when the non-muslims became a threat mm. so why you are quoting it for us why you are quoting why you are quoting the verse for us are you trying to deceive us oh you are trying to say to us we muslims we forgive others we don't kill them right away but if you became an, a threat to us we kill you right okay now this is this guy not only his arabic is broken it's funny Egyptian boy he forgot that this verse was mentioned in the city of Mecca and the Muslim themselves they claim that in the city of Mecca the Muslims were again being getting killed and tortured and Muhammad himself his life was under threat so how come Muhammad when he was in Mecca did not say go and do jihad how come when he left Mecca he went to the Medina he said do jihad because there he is more secure he is not under threat it was the Muslims after that who attacking the caravans you can go and check the caravans attacks of Muhammad just search in Google and you will find how many caravan he attacked he is the one was attacking them it was not the people of Mecca attacking Muhammad the whole story is is exactly what this guy is doing right now in Europe they are minority so when they are minority, oh, we forgive you, you know, we don't really want to do jihad against you, we don't want to kill you, unless he is an honest Muslim, and that is rare to find. Those who say things as it is are the real Muslims. Who they are practicing, they say things as it is. This is a guy who is practicing taqiyah. What is taqiyah? Taqiyah is to lie to your enemy. You say to them something, and you mean something else, and we will show you that. So he's quoting for us a verse, he knew it's abrogated. So what the point of quoting it, by quoting it? Listen to this. He will explain to you why the the base or the normative islamic position the default position is a peaceful position uh-huh this is a big fat lie because he forgot to mention to you that islam have stages in the beginning when we are weak we speak of friendly then when we have a strength we prepare ourselves and we attack you let us see what muhammad he says and let us see how muslims they killed muslims are muslims are a threat is a Muslim is a threat to a Muslim? Why Muslims kill the Muslim? Let us say this guy is saying that those the tribe of Quraysh, who is the tribe of Muhammad anyway, they are his family. They became a threat to Muhammad. Let us see this lie how how long it going to hold. What about killing the Muslims who just refused to give Abu Bakr a goat to pay him the zakat? What is the threat of somebody who didn't want to give you a goat? What a big fat liar. First of all, we will go here. Muhammad, he said, and the one is talking is Muhammad. Muhammad, he gave us, you see the Muslim, they say to you, we have the pillars of Islam and we have the pillars of faith. Those pillars are not what they say to you. It is in the front of you in this hadith. And all those hadith are accurate and sahih. None of them Muslims can say it is weak. 
in this is in, in, in those reports in the front of us it says it clearly what make Muhammad kill what is the reason to kill according to Muhammad is it really because somebody became a threat read with me carefully and let us expose this hypocrite Egyptian funny Arabic speaking boy Muhammad said I remember this is not me saying and this is not my translation and this is the Muslim translation and this is a Muslim website this is sunnah.org this is not a Christian Prince website or a Christian website or this is made by Muslim translated by Muslims and printed by Muslims carried to us by Muslims delivered to us by Muslims approved by Muslims read carefully Allah Apostle said I have been ordered to fight the people to tell the say none has the right to be worshipped but Allah so what is the problem is that because they are in a threat or this is because they have to say that we worship only Allah why I mean but it's it's normal Muslims Muslims are followers of the devil every Muslim is a worshipper of the devil they lie and they knew they lie Oh, you know this Islam the the purpose of Islam is peace but if you became a threat to us what we have to do jihad is about defending ourselves what the big fat liar like your prophet so Muhammad when he was weak he was licking the poo, poo of the Arab even he promised the Christian and the Jews and the Sabians to go to heaven the Sabians the worship the one who worship the stars we believe it even those who, who promised them to go to heaven because he was weak he was trying to get anyone to believe in him so whoever you know whoever passed by you say what your religion oh you are Sabian you 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 go to heaven oh you are Nasara you will go to heaven oh you are a Jew you go to heaven it doesn't matter he got his force to kill the tone change and then not only they have to say Shahada and you know they have to worship Allah no and if they say no or this so so if they say so which means they say that they worship Allah and pray like our prayer you have even to face the direction of if you pray to different direction they will slaughter you so if you say Muhammad is a prophet and Allah is God still they will kill you unless you pray like us you face our direction you slaughter as we slaughter you have to eat halal food as he order you if you don't he will kill you still then read carefully then their blood and the property will be sacred to us so what is going to stop Muhammad from sucking your blood like a mosquito is you say he is a prophet praying as he pray paying him the zakat slaughter as he slaughter and then then and only then your blood and your property and look at the word of property here Muhammad is a thief if you don't do what he asking you for not only he will kill you he will take your property do you see it not only he is going to acquire your blood as a Dracula he will take your property too now ask yourself this guy was saying to us the normal stage of Islam is peace but if you make a threat against us we kill you where is the threat here I've been ordered to fight all the people tell tell what does it say tell stop fighting me no does it say still they go in peace no does it say uh, still it, 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 it doesn't say that actually Muhammad he said it clearly in the Quran that you should not cry for peace as long you are the uppermost so the condition of peace in Islam is to be the uppermost If you are the uppermost, if we go to the Muslim website, hold on. Uh, this is uh, we copy his video by mistake. Sorry. If we go to his video, his uh, his Islamic Quran, we will find the following. Let us let us laugh together. Is Islam really or the normal stage of life in Islam is peace? Let us see. In a second, we will discover the truth about that. A 
And I challenge this Abdul if he have the courage to debate me. But for sure he will never dare to do so, as usual. Huh? All right. Let us see what the Quran say. This is the Muslim Quran, and this is the Muslim translation, chapter 47, verse number 35. Even the chapter name is the chapter of the peaceful, loving Muhammad. What this chapter says, five, read with me carefully. Be not weary and faint hatred crying for peace. What? I thought the normal stage of Islam is to cry for peace. No. You cry for peace only when you are not the uppermost, which means when you are not strong. Like now they sign, like his country, Egypt, they sign a peace agreement with the Israeli. Why? Because each time they attack them, they beat the hell of them. So they find there is no way to survive unless we sign a peace agreement with the, with the Jews. Otherwise, everybody knows that every Muslim, he loves to kill every Jew in this earth. So cry not for peace when you are the uppermost. So what is the condition to be in peace or not in peace? If you are the uppermost, Allah is saying to them, why you want to go for peace? Are you stupid? Kill them all. Which means, if you are not the uppermost, is this the only situation where you can be in peace with those non-believers and why how I'm going to be in peace with them if I'm going to kill them later it is temporarily peace this is why if we go in chapter 3 verse number 28 chapter 3 verse number 28 you see uh, first of all this is the verse he quote for us it says here clearly that this is <laughs> this is the verse Muhammad he gave before his migration out of the Medina to Medina <laughs> in this in this scenario here Muhammad was weak he have only a panty without diaper so here he is a very weak person and now he speak about forgive them I mean they don't like us they don't you know they don't believe in us forgive them forgive them from what they did not do anything but because now he have to play that he is a mosquito he is the one anyone can spank him he's weak but later when he went he commanded to fight the disbelievers the disbelievers all of them not like did Muhammad fight only the people of Mecca Muhammad he sent the three letters to three kings have nothing to do with Muhammad he they never met Muhammad they never attacked Muhammad what about the attack of Tabuk hmm? Muhammad he took an army he threat first the Caesar of the Roman, saying to him, convert Islam to Islam, convert to Islam and you will be saved, otherwise I will slaughter you. And this is why the Hadith says, we showed you, that I've been ordered to kill all mankind. You see in the in Arabic, it says, uqatil. Uqatil is not to fight. Uqatil is mean to fight, to kill. Coming from the word qatala. So I've been ordered to fight, to kill, until there is no people around me, don't accept me as a prophet and don't pray as Muslims and don't worship Allah and don't pay zakat and if you don't pay zakat I will kill you too you have to pay me hmm? read on here carefully the message of Allah said I have been ordered to fight against the people which mean all kind of people all mankind until they testify that there is no none to worship to worship except Allah and Muhammad is a prophet. So the Muslims, they lie to us. They say the purpose of Islam is to worship Allah. It's a lie. The purpose is to worship Muhammad. Muhammad, he have to put his name with the name of his God. And the Muslims, they say to us, you Christian, you associate the name of a man with the name of God. When the Muslims, they put the name of Muhammad with the name of their God. And yet they say they believe in one God. But the fact, the purpose is Muhammad. Because if you say, I believe in Allah, it is not an enough reason not to be slaughtered. You will be slaughtered. You have to say you believe in, uh, in Allah and in Muhammad. And then after that, you establish the prayer and then you pay the zakat. This is why we see that Umar al-Khattab, sorry, uh, Abu Bakr, he launched a war and he said, even if they hold from me a robe, a robe, you know what a robe? I will kill them, even if they are Muslims. Even if they are Muslims and they hold from me a rope, read with me carefully. 
Abu Huraira said when the messenger of Allah S A W S S F M B M died Abu Bakr was made his successor after him and certain Arabic clans apostates Omar ibn Khattab said to Abu Bakr how can you fight with people until they say there's no God but Allah see they believe in Allah <laughs> but still you have to kill them they are not a threat they are not attacking them it is the Muslim who launched the war but what the purpose look what we said and people have to agree with him is so so whoever says there he has protected his property see so why you how why they are protected why Omar is saying to him you should not kill them because they say that Allah is God this is the understanding of Omar. So this is mean those people, they are forced to convert to Islam. And now they heard Muhammad is dead. This is why they became an apostate for they thought, okay, now we are free. The scam is gone. The scam founder is gone. And we can, we can leave Islam. So they, they decide to leave Islam. Look what Abu Bakr, he said. Uh, he, uh, he continues saying, his person from me except for what do from him and his rocking is left to Allah so Abu Bakr answer he said I swear by Allah that I will certainly fight those who make a, a, a distinction between the prayer and the zakat so those people who they are calling the apostate they just refuse either prayer they don't want to pray they are free or to pay zakat to pay money they will kill them for that reason so this liar was saying to us if you became a threat we will kill you those are Muslims they believe in Allah they worship Allah and yet the reason to kill them if they broke any of the promise which Muhammad he forced them to do in order to live in order to protect their property to worship to pay the zakat to, for, to, to, to face the Qibla, to slaughter as we slaughter, to eat as we eat, to speak as we speak, and then and only then your property and your blood is protected. So now Abu Bakr explained to Omar, he's saying, they broke the conversion to Islam, which is giving them protection. Why they are protected? Omar, he said to him, how we are going to kill people who say there's no God but Allah? He told him he continued he explained to him because they did not they make distinguish between the prayer and the zakat so maybe those people they want to pray but they don't want to pay zakat or maybe they want to pay zakat but they don't want to pray so if you make distinguish you are dead and he continues saying I swear by Allah that if they were to refuse me a rope of a camel or a female baby of a goat whatever equal to that I'm going to kill them all do you see it <laughs> so the liar was saying to us we Muslims we fight only if you fight us those did not fight him and those are Muslims And the same we can find in the Quran in chapter 9 verse number 73 and 74 the Quran encouraged the Muslims to kill those who they are not Muslims and those who leave Islam so if we go in chapter 9 verse number 73 you will see here it says oh, oh prophet strive jihad is strive but the fact it doesn't say strive what strive it says go and do jihad you see the Muslims they lie in purpose even in the translation this is why I always I say to you don't ever trust a Muslim translation for anything if I go right now and get the Quran translation from Islamic website different Islamic website you will see how the verse translation totally change it's like it's like magic let, let me show you an example it does it say really strive or go and wage war and do jihad let us see this is sunnah x.com and they have a lot of translation not only one I will show you all of them hmm? the first one he said strive what does strive mean <laughs> fast 
O Prophet, wage jihad against the faithless and the hypocrites. Why you want to wage jihad? What the problem? Because they are faithless and hypocrites. <laughs> you know? But he just said to us that, no, we don't do that. You know? The verse after it says why? The verse after it says because those people, some of them they don't want to believe Islam and some of them they are after believing in Islam, they are not practicing Islam. Do you see it? This is verse number huh? 74. So after their faith in Islam, they left Islam. So we killed them. For they renou renounced the faith after their Islam. And the, and the stupid Muslim, they say to you that in the whole Quran, there is no verse for apostasy or somebody to be killed if he leave Islam. This is because they are either liars or dumb. Chapter 9, verse number 74 says it clearly. Chapter seven, 9, verse number 73 and 74 is speaking about doing jihad and killing anyone who don't believe in Islam or he is a Muslim who is leaving Islam. And this is why we saw the story of Abu Bakr. However, this guy is practicing what is called taqiyya. And I will finish with this to make it simple for you. In chapter 3, verse number 28 in the Quran, it says it clearly that the Muslim, he can speak to you in a friendly way, which means he can announce to you in you as you like, you know, in you as you like to hear. And then, but in his heart, the story is different. The Quran says in many places, chapter 5, verse 51, says, Take not Christians and Jews as a friends. Take not Christians and Jews as a friends. Chapter 3, verse 28 says, Take not any who anyone is not a believer as a Christian or any anyone as a friend. But in the same time, it's explain to you what you can do. It says, The one who is sincere, who take them as a friend, he have no honor. He have no connection with Allah. He have no protection, no mercy, which means the Muslim should kill him. For now he became an apostate. For the second you take a friend with a Christian or a Jew or a Hindu or a Buddha, you became out of Islam. You became an apostate. And this is the interpretation of Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Muhammad, not my interpretation. And by the way, Ibn Abbas is the only scholar Muhammad. He named him as a scholar and even he prayed to Allah to make him the scholar of Islam. But the Quran made a condition how you can take them as a friend. Let us see what kind of friendship we are talking about. He said, but yet you guard yourself against them, save yourself from them, talking as if to your security, saving yourself from them by speaking in a friendly way toward them while your heart is like this. Do you see more satanic than this? The funny, the same verse, the, it's calling non Muslims as hypocrite, but this is the Islam teaching Muslims to be hypocrite. It's 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 allowing them to speak to us in a friendly way, but their heart is dislike this. So, my friend, when you speak to a Muslim, you are speaking with the baby of the devil, for he is not allowed to be your friend. For what does that mean? It means you are his enemy, and he have a duty to kill you. This is why chapter 9, verse 29 says, Fight those who don't believe in Allah. From who? From the Christian and the Jews. Until either they convert to Islam or they pay the jizya. And the jizya, the Muslim, they will say to you, it's a tax, which is a big fat lie. Muhammad, he said it clearly, that jizya is a sign of humiliation. The Muslims, they have to humiliate you in order to force you to convert to Islam. This is why in the hadith, we will find the hadith saying the following, that the Muslims are the best of mankind. Muslims are fascist people. They are fascist. And let me show you the fascism of Islam. Muslims are the best of mankind and they have a duty. Why they are the best of mankind? Because they have a duty to go and attack you and rape your wife and bring you with the chain around your neck. Read with me. You are the best of the people ever raised for the benefit of mankind. You see the benefit of mankind? Amazing. Sound like good. Chapter 3, verse 110. 
So the Muslim believe they are the best of mankind. That's why they look everybody, everybody down. You are dirty. You are filthy. The Quran call non-Muslims nudges, pigs, monkeys. They are the worst of the creatures. The best of mankind. Why? Is who is the best for mankind? Are those who bring them with the chains around their necks till they embrace Islam. This is the best of mankind. This guy is saying to us, "I'm not going to fight you unless you fight me." But the best of mankind is those who attack others and bring them the chains around their necks until they force them to embrace Islam or they kill them. This is how we get the liars busted. Please copy the video, share it with your friends, and may the Lord bless you, all of you. Christ is Lord, and this is a Christian prince who was with you. If you are a Muslim and you think you are good to debate me, please feel free. Contact me. As you see, there is my address there in the screen. Be a man and debate Christian press. You can find my videos, which usually sometimes you cannot find them in YouTube. You can find them in my page in minds.com, as you see in the screen. And you can contact me there too, just as in case. Thank you, and God bless. Christ is Lord, and Islam is a lie supported by dump liars who think they can get away with their lies because people are illiterate like their prophet they think we are stupid like them they can give us some lies and i'm so glad that this guy he said that this verse is abrogated so this is what the muslims they do they quote for you verses which is abrogated did allah replace the verse which is abrogated by better verse or always it says kill them kill them wherever you find them I think we explained enough. Thank you for watching. Please download the video, share it in your channel, and be a man if you are a Muslim, and stand up and accept the challenge to debate me. And I say that to this man who made this video, who he claimed that he knows Islam, but the fact even he cannot even quote the Quran correctly. Thank you very much, and God bless.